In this video, I'm going to show you the most common mistakes that new Etsy sellers make so that you can avoid them. I've been coaching new Etsy sellers for a while now, and these are definitely the most common mistakes that I see. So make sure to watch the whole video. And also at the end, I'll be giving you a bonus tip that contradicts a lot of content that's out there. So I'm curious to see if you agree with me on that tip or not. And yeah, this is going to be a jam-packed one. So let's get into it. Hi right, guys, welcome back. So how this video will work is as I explain the common mistakes to avoid and these shop owners were kind enough to let me use their shop as an example. So if you're watching this right now, appreciate it. And for everyone else, if you want me to review it, please leave your shop name in the comments and I can definitely, whenever I do more videos like this, I can use yours as an example. All right, so let's get into it. So the first couple of tips will be more general optimizations on your shop. So when someone lands on your shop, this is something that they see instantly. And the first thing I'm sure you may have already realized is the banner, which is missing. So if you're missing a banner, Etsy adds this little bit of graphic just to create some visual appeal to it. Ideally, you would want to create your own customization banner. So some examples from other people, something like this, this is, this is great. Here's another example, pretty big text, but we can talk about that later on in the video, how it's good to have big text in your images. Uh, and I'll explain more later. But, but yeah, these are the banners. And for this shop here, they don't have one. So you definitely want to include this. Whether buyers are shopping from the mobile app or the web browser, they're going to see this. And it's just a great way to let people know what you're selling visually. I have another video talking about different ways of designing banners, which I'll link somewhere on the screen here. But generally, you definitely want to add something. Even if you use the same graphics here, it's still better than not having a banner, okay? So this is real estate that you definitely want to take advantage of to create a branding, showing more call to action and explaining your shop. So the second mistake to avoid is to not have your sections listed here, okay? So this shop, I know you only have nine listings, but even with nine listings, you still want to categorize these in sections, even if it's just one section, because the section itself displays a row in SEO. Right. So for example, of all your items here are Halloween based, maybe you can use the word Halloween in here just to categorize them all, right? Even though it's one category, you still want to do that. As you can see this shop right here, they're selling prints, right? They're all prints, but they got photography prints, definition prints, swatch prints, right? These are perfect. And these are also keyword relevant as well. So people could actually search this keyword and it helps play a role in your overall Etsy shop ranking. Let's continue with the shop here. Tip number three is to add something in your announcement section, okay? So this is the announcement section. Uh, as you can see right here, I guess they have one here on the shop. What about this shop? Okay, they all have one. But what you include on here is also very important. Here they talk about, welcome to my shop, uh, and here's an offer, right? Having an offer in here is great, having a call to action, but you also want to add a little bit more, right? You can talk about what you actually offer here, which is landscape prints, nursery prints, and positive prints and art. This is perfect. And also I didn't mention this, but this is the shop title where you want to make sure it's SEO friendly as well, which is perfect. But back to the announcement area, you definitely want to include some of these keywords because this area here, you're not using any relevant keywords. Even these keywords you want to put in here. And I talk a lot more in depth on how to have the most optimized announcement page, sections, shop titles in my SEO guide. So you can definitely check it out in the description below. Kind of goes through a lot of step-by-step -step on how to optimize your full shop, right? The FAQ section, the about page, and everything else that you need to do to optimize the SEO aspect of your shop. So definitely check it out in the description. But back to here, just to keep in mind that the announcement page, this only shows at the top for the web browser view but this will show at the bottom on your mobile phone. Okay, so something to keep in mind that yes, this is very important, but on the mobile phone, it's actually near the end. So if you think about it that way, you want to make sure that the story aligns as someone scrolls through the top from the banner into the listings, into the reviews, and then into the announcement. You wanna make sure that there's a cohesive storyline to it, right? This is like a little bit too advanced, but something to think about how these placements and these sections are placed depending on where the buyer is viewing the products. Okay, enough of me rambling, let's get to the next step. All right, so the next couple of things to avoid are more branding related tips, okay? And the first one is your main image and understanding how it's cropped. As you can see this one comparing to this one, this is perfectly cropped on the thumbnail. 
where it shows a bit of background, but also it doesn't cut through and crop on the actual product that you're trying to sell. Comparing to this one, you can see most of the art print itself, like obviously you know what it is, but it'd be nicer to actually see the whole frame, right? So this one, I would leave a little bit more space, but this is, this is good, right? This one's perfect. This one, I definitely would create more space down here so you can see it. So something to keep in mind, you know, for any of you guys creating your thumbnail is one of the most important things because how you package the listing at the front from your pricing, your titles, and your main image mockup is what makes someone clicks on your shop, right? Is what dictates your click through rate, right? The CTR in terms of how many views you get, how much traffic you get, and ultimately the sale. So definitely don't overlook this. It's a mistake I see a lot of people make and make sure you don't do that. And so for everyone else that don't want to think about how to crop it and they just want to make sure that their image is exactly this or portion, this ratio, I would suggest creating a canvas size that's 2000 pixels by 2500 pixels, okay? So that is pretty much a four by five ratio file. And if you design that in Photoshop or wherever you do your designs, it's pretty much exactly this frame. So you don't have to worry about how it will crop. You know exactly how it will look when you put it on Etsy. So something to consider if you're not doing square or vertical images, just do the four by five ratio. So the next mistake I see a lot of new sellers make is when you add text to your images, whether it's on your banners or your actual image listings or about page, anything like that, the text is too small. Okay. So here's a good example of something that's really nice and big. And you might think this is huge, right? This is super huge for computer screen. But if you consider how many shoppers are shopping from the mobile app, right? More than 65% of people are shopping from the app itself. Then this text is perfect. Okay. And this one is actually not that bad. I've seen people who make it way smaller. Ideally you want to make it bigger. So this is a lot of space that could have been avoided. Like this text might be a bit too small. Okay. So it's not that bad, but something to consider for people who have really small text in their images. Once you set up your shop, you want to take a look at it on the phone and just see if you can read the banner, you can read the images, everything like that. Okay. So something to keep in mind to check on the browser, but also on your phone. The next branding mistake that I see a lot of new sellers make is not having a consistent background in the images. Okay. So a lot of people might think this is not that big of a deal, but for me as someone that's really design focused and had a, has a background in graphic design, it is very important back to the click through rate, right? The CTR, how to improve that is by just having a consistency in your mockups, especially the first one. So right here, perfect example. These are great, right? These are all consistent with the same background here as well. Even this one, even though you're selling a five frame product here compared to a single one, you still have the same background, which is perfect comparing to this one here. Okay. This alone is a great one. If everything else doesn't match it, it doesn't stay in the same branding elements. Okay. So whether if you're doing this on Photoshop, maybe you want to remove the shadow layer, right? Then it is the same tone, right? Even this one, if you can remove this flooring, to make it the same as this tone, that might even be better for you. Because just looking at, this looks more like a search page. Like when someone searches wall art on Etsy, it doesn't look like someone's actual shop. So you make sure that you're very consistent and make a cohesive shop. That way you look more professional, you gain more trust from the buyers, and ultimately you have a better conversion rate, which leads to more sales to your shop, okay? So definitely don't make this mistake. So number seven, let's get into some more SEO tips in terms of your titles and tags. So number seven will be your titles, right? I know a lot of people are have a lot of questions about how to have an optimized titles and tags, which I talk a little bit more about in my SEO guide in the link below. But here I'm going to give you an example of one that you definitely want to avoid. Okay. So this great piece of work, by the way, I love it, but your title can be improved. So right here it says pirates risky ship. Okay, cool. This is describing what the art print is. And then you got printable art, which is a great keyword to use a bit more saturated now, but you know, still good to have. And then you have a unique piece of art that you won't find anywhere else. Okay. So this line is a really cool one. It's something that you might want to add in your description. You want to add it in a description, but not in the titles, because if you think about it, how often are people going to actually search a unique piece of art up here? Okay. Maybe there are a few, but I doubt people will do that. They might search maybe waves while art, ocean art, 
ship, ship or art, pirate ship, right? Something like that. These are more the keywords that people will search to find something like this. So you definitely want to go through that researching phase on E-Rank, Everbee, Sales Ceremony, these platforms, and see what keywords you can use to put in here, okay? So this itself is not a keyword. This is just a description, okay? Make sure in the titles you're adding things that people are searching, whether you're doing turquoise or teal or color-based keywords, or you're doing style, you're doing painting. Painting is another keyword you want to use. Just different ways of how you can describe this piece is where you want to put it here. Next is the tag. So let's check out the same listing and see what kind of tags you're working with. So you can use an app like eRank to quickly track that. And right here, let's take a look how you're doing the tags. Art, decoration, limited, printable, stylish. Okay, so these are all one word, or most of them are one word tags. You definitely want to do a bit more than that. Let's say for vintage, maybe you want to do vintage art, vintage wall art, if you can fit it unique unique wall art so just don't use one word tags try to fit as many characters as you can there's only 12 tags in there but you can use up to 13 tags so make sure you use all of them there's no point of not using them all and take advantage of it so the way that i normally do it is once i figure out the title putting the keywords in here and then i'll try to use those exact same keywords into the tags and for the most part you'll have more room to add more tags so you're going to have more tags than keywords but Usually I mirror these two, the tags and the keywords. Okay, so definitely don't make that mistake and just doing different ones. Etsy likes to see consistency in the way that you use SEO and that you're really focusing and targeting these keywords. Number nine is the description. Also, this description here plays a role in SEO. So let's see how well it is here. Okay, depending on what digital product you're selling, you definitely want to include what type of files that you have included in your listing. So we're here. This is perfect. You're showing exactly what you have. Great job. But also another quick tip back to the images. You want to make sure you add that information in the listings as well. So let me see if there's another example from the other shops. Let's say, okay, so this other shop, this is perfect. Instant download, letting them know that this is a digital instant download and not a physical product. And also I'm guessing this last image here is, yeah, perfect. So another file size guide, whether you're doing print on demand or digital products, you want to make sure you let them know this as well. Even though I know you're showing them in the description, but a lot of people don't look at that. A lot of people are just skimming through the images. And if you don't provide the information that they want to see, they're going to somewhere else. So you can always add these in. But also another reason why you want to include these in is it actually gives you more product images in your listings, right? So these are two images that you design once and you can put them into all of your other listings. Okay. All right. So this is for my last tip. Now I gave you some overall mistakes to avoid, but this one last mistakes, I believe is a huge one that not a lot of people are talking about, which is stop spending your time promoting on social media. Okay. And the reason why I'm saying that, and you might be wondering social media, everyone's talking about how good it is. You're using social media. Why can't I be using social media? Okay. So the reason is when I talk to a lot of new Etsy sellers who are focused on creating good products, working on SEO, there's a lot of things you need to learn and it takes time. And I know what it's like when you're starting out to have a limited amount of time. You got either a job, you're a student, time's limited, right? So what's the most effective way for you to get the result that you want? And I believe the best way is to create good products, understand how SEO works and solely focusing on this platform. And learning everything about it, how to be a good seller on here, watching things like this, how to avoid mistakes and the step-by-step -step optimization, branding. I would focus on that and you don't need social media to succeed. I use social media for different reasons, but I don't use it to create a good successful shop. All I use is SEO and tags, having a good product, and it still works to this day. Doing social media is a great way to promote as well, but I've seen many people who spend hours and hours a week doing it and getting no results. Whereas if they spent those hours spending on optimizing the shop, they see way better optimization and way better return on their time. Okay. I'm curious to see what you think about my take on this. And yeah, make sure to drop in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what everyone thinks about it. But that's just what I think is best for people starting on Etsy is focus on Etsy, focus on the platform itself, get good at creating a good product on SEO and don't spend time 
doing social media. Maybe later down the road, you can start doing Pinterest, you can start doing TikTok or maybe Instagram now, maybe doing some short content. But generally in the start, that's too much stuff you need to worry about, right? Learning how to market on social media is a whole nother skill set that I need to learn and master before it starts becoming effective and you can actually gain a return from it. That's my take. Let me know what you think. And yeah, make sure if you haven't followed me already, make sure you do. I make a new video every week teaching you how to sell digital products, print on demand on Etsy. And as I mentioned before, I have an SEO guide showing you step-by-step -step on how to optimize your Etsy shop so that you can get the most of it and start ranking on page one. So until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.